Southern California Ridgecrest rattled by a 3.9 earthquake and aftershocks just now. Magnitude 3.1 in Petrolia, Juan de Fuca, and even Seattle is shaking. All the way, the west coast, from the north to the south. Ventura, north of Los Angeles, Imperial Valley is still shaking. This is after a swarm of four magnitudes in various areas near the Garlic Fault. Garlic Fault on the fault had a series of quakes today as well. Let's take a look at them together. Here we are at Seismo Berkeley. Here we are at uh, the Ventura area. The swarm is still ongoing. Although, of course, they're a lot smaller than the four that we had uh, a few hours ago. Los Angeles area. And here we are at the 3.4 quake. Ridgecrest, China Lake. Now the magnitude 3.9 Trona, which is just uh, southeast of Ridgecrest, was felt by 105 people that reported it so far. In the Mojave Desert, it's on the Garlic Fault, the east of the Garlic Fault. And we've had an additional three smaller quakes in magnitude on the Garlic Fault. Uh, I'm sorry, something's wrong with my... something has gone off with my uh, ability to show you, but uh, I'll just be able to at least uh, inform you of what's going on here. Okay, we had magnitude less than 2.5, another three of them this past day. 2.1 at a depth of minus 1, a 1.0 depth of 11 kilometers, a, de a depth of minus 1.5, magnitude 1.1. I made a mistake. It's not 2.1, it's 1.2 magnitude. And um, all along the Walker Lane fault system, Ridgecrest heading northwest, southeast, towards the Walker Lane fault system, which is, as we know, parallel to the San Andreas. San Andreas full of earthquakes all the way up to Seattle. We've had a 3.1 magnitude at West of Petrolia. That was felt by one person who reported to USGS. It uh, is on the coast, basically. Off the coast. And uh, a three magnitude to the west of that on the escarpment of the Gorda escarpment. We've had a tremendous amount of quakes today at the geysers, ongoing, shallow, and all the way up to Seattle. Seattle has had 2.6, one kilometer northeast of Lake Marcel Stillwater in Washington. And that was felt by 74 people who reported 2.6. Now the tectonic summary of the Pacific Northwest. States of Washington and Oregon result from slip and faults in a variety of geographic geological settings. The earthquakes in much of the region are a consequence of stresses associated with motion of the Juan de Fuca oceanic plate in the northeast. With respect to the North American continental plate at a rate of several centimeters per year. And we know that Juan de Fuca plate is one of the worst subduction zone areas in the world. This relative motion largely made possible because Juan de Fuca descends into the Earth's mantle below the North American continent along what is called the Cascadia subduction zone, which extends from northwest California through western Oregon and western Washington to Vancouver Island. Canada relative plate motion that is not accommodated by subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate is accommodated by deformation of overriding North American plate. Earthquakes are associated with both the subduction process and the deformation of the overriding American plate, North American plate.
Now, seismological terms commonly used to describe the different modes of earthquakes occurring here in Washington and Oregon. Megathrust earthquake, the interplate or plate boundary quakes in the context of subduction zone result from rupture of the principal interface between the subduction Juan de Fuca plate and the overriding North America plate. Okay, now we're talking about the area of uh, Washington, Oregon, which is, of course, active lately. This is all. This has all been jolted from the Ridgecrest earthquake of July 4th and 5th. Everything has increased in activity tremendously. Now, the last great megathrust earthquake here happened in the, in the Cascadia subduction zone was in 1700, a 1,000 kilometer long rupture documented by studies of the resulting tsunami in Japan, by Native American oral traditions, and by geological deposits from tsunami and offshore turbidity flows caused by the intense shaking and ground deformation associated with the earthquake. Most of the megathrust interface between Juan de Fuca plate and North America plate has not been seismically active in decades, during which it's been monitored by seismometers. Except perhaps near Cape Mendocino, where a Gorda microplate is commonly demarcated with a border, with the border, broader Juan de Fuca plate, and at one location offshore from Astoria, Oregon. But geodetic data shows that comprehensive compressive tectonic strain is currently accumulating across the Cascadia megathrust as a result of subduction process. Together with geologic evidence from 1700 and earlier great earthquakes, the accumulation of compressive tectonic strain implies that the recent quiescence of most of the Cascadia subduction zone megathrust is temporary and that the ongoing subduction process will cause large and great earthquakes in the future. Now besides this, we've had earthquakes in Canada. There was some person that said, uh, today gave me a um, um, comment having to do with the fact that we don't have big earthquakes uh, in the Northeast, but we do. And you usually see them on the maps having to do with the north, east, and the um, northwest. And I'll show you right now, even though I have a problem with my, I'm sorry, I have a problem with my, uh, I'll try and fix it, but let's take a look at it. Okay, here we have Canada. And as you can see, it's full of earthquakes. Take your pick, especially the northeast here. And, um, uh, at one point here, uh, around here, there was a 7.3, historically one of the biggest quakes in Canada. So as you can see, it's what we have on the East Coast, West Coast, the whole thing is going through Canada as well. I don't know why the uh, Seismic Berkeley maps don't, don't show Canada activity at all, uh, but it's there. And basically, it's, it, it's the same pressure the same fault lines on the west coast San Andreas and here the real foot rift zone of the New Madrid seismic zone it just doesn't stop at New Madrid it goes all the way up and of course here we have a tremendous amount of volcanoes Maine has five volcanoes by itself four of them are in a 100 mile um, distance with each from each other and Maine only has a 210 mile uh, distance from um, New Brunswick to New Hampshire anyway. Uh, and they're finding new ones all the time. They just found recently old ancient volcanoes in Kansas where people have been hearing very strange explosion and boom sounds and their houses shaking. That's because you've got Kimberline Diamond volcanoes there which are explosive. And of course the gas release from underneath sometimes is, is bubbles coming up, trying to come up and release the gas from underneath the volcanoes, which are, these bubbles can be miles, miles long trying to come out. And here we have the activity from the um, 
Mendocino and the escarpment of the Gorda escarpment, sorry, the Gorda escarpment, and this, of course, the today's quake are the blue, the past hour are the red, and this is the garlic fault right here. And the Ridgecrest quake that we had, 3.9, is around here with quake swarms, of course. Imperial Valley had the four magnitude, 3.6, 3.2, and is still ongoing, and Ventura as well. So we're moving into the four magnitude earthquakes, which is, of course, on the biggest side. And we had a hundred some odd people report feeling it there. I'll leave links below for you for this. And all of you who are there, please be very careful and be alert. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.